Hello internet world, welcome to the live Q&A session and also within this broadcast I will be actually sharing with you a very very exciting product which you can see just off to the right of me here plus a really cool keyboard. Now if you've watched my videos on the Geek Noise channel for the past sort of three to four weeks you'll know that I've been in the search for a new keyboard so that's one of the really cool items I'm going to show you before sort of starting the Q&A. And then about halfway through, about midway in this broadcast, I'll show you this product here, which is very, very cool as well. If you're into creating your own videos, then this, especially if you're a vlogger, this will be of great interest. So before I actually show you the keyboard, I'll just say a quick hello to those of you who've come in really early. I appreciate each and every one of you. The view account just seems to go up and up each time I do a live broadcast, and there's already 20 of you watching, so thank you for all tuning in. Hello to Snapshoot, to Taze, to Jessica Edmonds, Askel Stormo, Tom Scott, and Desi Army. Hello, Desi Army, you like my glasses? These are, in fact, new bins on my face. I needed a new prescription. Went for something that looks similar to my old glasses and uh, these are Timberlands. Really pleased with them. Now, a couple of little bits of uh, sort of uh, housekeeping before I start. I have got coming up on the channel really very soon the new editing room tour. Uh, it's taken a lot more editing than I thought and I was also waiting for a couple of products to come in. So I'm currently working on that. I do an editing room tour and also a studio tour every year. I haven't started the studio tour yet because I'm waiting for some artwork to go up on the wall here. I'm actually commissioning a piece of really large artwork, one and a half meters in length to go up on the wall in the studio. And then I'll start putting together the studio tour for 2017 as well. But the editing room tour is almost ready. So do stay tuned for that. Now, the other bit of housekeeping is just to mention when I start the Q&A session, I will of course answer as many questions as I can. If you do want your question or indeed your comment highlighted, you can use the super chat. It's not for everyone, but it does enable you to bring your comments and questions to my attention really quickly. But I will answer as many questions from all of you without the use of super chat as well. A quick couple of uh, other quick hellos as well. Uh, hello to Power Ray X and also Ryan Barkley. Thank you very much for tuning in. So before we start some of the questions of which I have had some emailed in already, I want to show you this product here. Because I'm in the search for a new keyboard, uh, I was really very, very pleased that Kingston sent me in their HyperX Alloy FPS. This is what the product packaging comes like. And this has got uh, Cherry MX Brown switches in it. So this is a mechanical keyboard and it's got a really high build quality. Let's show you the actual keyboard itself. What I like about this one, in comparison to some of the earlier ones I've been testing, is that this is a really nice compact size. Normally, these mechanical keyboards come with like a, a really large sort of plastic casing around them. And the bottom portion here where you put your wrists but whilst you're typing is sometimes not that comfortable. Well, this one is literally, the base is just the size of the keyboard and we've still got the full-size numeric keypad or the number pad that I really insist on having on my keyboards. And you've got this really nice actuation on the keys. Very, very tactile when you're typing on this. And the Cherry MX Brown keys, or switches I should say, are a little bit quieter than other switches. Uh, which I personally really appreciate as well because it's nice to have a, a clacky keyboard, you know, something that's really tactile, but you don't want something too noisy, uh, especially when it's going into the editing room and I might be doing a voiceover and sort of starting the voiceover going. So I really appreciate that this is a little bit quieter. It does come with some tools inside the box. You can swap out the W, uh, A, S and D keys with different colours as well and it is fully backlit. This is a really awesome keyboard it is absolutely fantastic and it's got a metal base on it as well that's where the name alloy fps comes in into play it's just a great well-made solid keyboard it's got some nice weight to it and it's superbly comfortable to type on 
Uh, to date, I really like the Kanex keyboard that I'm currently using. This is probably in second place actually. So this has overtaken all the other keyboards I've been testing, apart from the Kanex, because that's a bit more sort of similar to what I've been used to on the laptops and the Apple keyboards because of the chiclet style keys. But this is currently in second place. So very, very good keyboard. This is the HyperX Alloy FPS. Now, when I finish this broadcast, the links aren't there in the video description at the moment, but I will put links to all of the products I talk about throughout this broadcast down in the video description for you a little bit later on this evening. So that's the first product. I hope you enjoyed that one. If you've got any questions about that keyboard or the other keyboards I'm using, you can include that in the Q&A session. I'm gonna actually just get things rolling by answering some questions that came in on a previous video and also a couple that I got sent uh, via email that I've printed out here. Now, I don't rehearse any of the answers to these questions. I prefer to do the Q and A's that way because it's more spontaneous and you get more honest answer as well because I, I've got no time to sort of rehearse anything or any script. So here we go. Uh, this one comes in from Sam. Uh, what do you think of Apple launching their WWDC keynote two months earlier than usual? Uh, and do you expect that one more thing? And if so, what do you have in mind? Well, WWDC has been announced earlier than normal this year. And I think it was just a common courtesy that Apple were giving to all of the developers that have to travel to the event. So they were just giving them a really early heads up. I don't think there's any sort of um, hidden message in it at all. Now, will we see one more thing? We can always hope. We can always, always hope there's gonna be a big announcement at the end, but you have to appreciate that this is for developers so it's going to be primarily about uh, watch os ios and mac os so that's what i think we're going to get there and sam also sent another few questions in as well uh, sam said uh, do you think that the ipod is still relevant today and if so what type of person not so much honest answer to that i don't think it's very relevant nowadays uh, because if you were into music then I would buy like a dedicated high-res audio player rather than an iPod, something like the Sony Walkman that I just uh, unboxed on the channel recently. Uh, also, Sam asks, can you see Apple getting rid of the iPod eventually? Yes, I can. I can see them possibly retiring it, not this year, but maybe next year. I think they keep it around a little bit longer. And what do you make of Apple's AirPods and will you be getting any in to actually review? The AirPods, uh, the, like the white well the wired pods that go in your ear i didn't find that comfortable the AirPods are a very similar fit except they're obviously wireless so i didn't really like uh, the previous shape of their the apple earphones myself they weren't comfortable for me and they fell out all the time so the AirPods will definitely fall out of my ears so i'm i'm not going to get any in at all unfortunately uh we've got a few more questions coming in which i'm going to actually answer uh, in a short while, uh, but I'm going to answer a few more that came in on a previous video, first of all. So I've got here a question from Jamie Reed. Will you be testing the Samsung Galaxy S8? Yes, I will be. I might not be able to get it at launch, but I will be actually testing that. I'll probably get Vodafone to send me one in. Um, I, I love their service and I really do appreciate them supporting the channel. So hopefully they'll send one in. If not, I'll find another uh, sort of method of getting one in to the studio. Uh, Darren Gator asks, I've been wondering if you'll be doing any reviews on compact cameras and camcorders this year, consumer grade. Yes, I will. If there's anything sort of interesting released, then definitely compact cameras, probably not so much uh, camcorders. Purely because I covered a few camcorders last year, there's so little interest in them nowadays that it's very, very unlikely. Uh, more questions, and I did actually answer some of these in the comments of the video, but I will recap. Kids Play asked, what do you think is better for the subject of shooting video in 4K, Sony A6500 or Panasonic FZ2500? The better quality will be the Sony A6500. The Panasonic FZ2500 or 2000, as it's known in the UK, is still a very capable camera. It's got a lot smaller sensor in it, so it's not gonna be as good at lower light shooting as the Sony a6500. Uh, next question comes from, 
uh, from Mr. Peplo12345. I'm using a Surface Pro 4 and I'm thinking of a new phone. Would you suggest an iPhone or an Android phone? And he's quantified that with he doesn't use Mac, so he's got no Mac in, in the house at all. It's really difficult for me to answer that because Android has matured so much now that between Google, Android and iOS, there's very little difference. They're both very stable platforms. My personal choice is iOS, so I would say get an iPhone, uh, but wait for Mobile World Congress just around the corner and there's going to be a lot of interesting smartphones released then. And of course, we've got the new iPhone coming out as well. I'm really interested in seeing what the Galaxy S8 from Samsung has to offer and also the LG G6. So maybe just wait a little while and, and try and get some hands on with one before you commit to something, especially if you're on a contract. Uh, Matt Sibalu asks, I'm curious how things are going with the Alienware PC. Are you able to transition well coming from a Mac or do you think it'll take a bit longer? It'll take a bit longer. I have, have still got those issues with things crashing, especially when I'm exporting video. So it's going to take a little bit longer. Windows 10 is perfectly stable though. And the Alienware Aurora R6 is a very, very fast and capable machine. Uh, Alex Anderson asks, in the upcoming Mobile World Congress, is there any company in particular that you'll be paying close attention to? Yes, LG with the G6 and Samsung with the Galaxy S8. Uh, Bradley Cooper asks, Dave, what are your thoughts on jailbreaking? It isn't illegal, adds more functionality. Is it looked down upon by you? I definitely don't look down on it. Uh, but when I did jailbreak, and this is quite a few years ago, I found it did degrade the actual speed and the stability of the iPhone. Things just seem to get a little bit slower and a, bit, a little bit sluggish with the operating system. And I haven't jailbroken a phone since. So that's all of the questions on my Sony Xperia XA. Ultra, very, very nice smartphone uh, that came in on a previous video. So before I show this next product, I'm gonna take some live questions because after all, this is a live Q&A and it's what it's all about, the live interaction with you guys. So give me just uh, 30 seconds just to scroll up through the chat, just to check I haven't missed anything. And then we'll start getting some really good questions and answers going. Uh, Tom Scott asks, is it not a bit backward going from a low profile keyboard, which is nice to type on, compared to these old school mechanical long travel keys? I can type faster, you're referring to the, the Hyper X Alloy FPS keyboard, yet the travel is a lot more and it's a lot more clunky. But this is what I was brought up on. I used to type on the old Apple keyboard, which of course had these full size keys and more travel. So I can type a lot faster on this than a chiclet style keyboard. So you've still got that transition moving across the mechanical keyboard again, but I can certainly type faster on that once I get used to the slightly different sort of spacing between the keys. Uh, Power Ray X asks, what mic do you recommend for the Panasonic G80 for YouTube and filming metal gigs? So this is for filming gigs, wow. That's a really difficult question. I'm not really experienced in filming sort of uh, music concerts or artists. I would probably go for something like a Rode VideoMic Pro or a Stereo VideoMic Pro where you've got that gain adjustment or possibly I would get that and if money wasn't an object, so if you had a good amount of funds to put on it, I would get a separate audio recorder as well because they've got really good uh, sort of gain controls on them and really nice microphones, especially if you go for something like a, a Zoom uh, audio recorder, um, something like a, an H6 possibly, that would be the ultimate combination because you'd have really good control over the audio. Yes, it would mean you synchronizing the audio afterwards, but then you could choose between the audio that you'd captured internally on the camera with the Rode VideoMic Pro and the external recorder, you could choose whichever one came out best, synchronize them up, mute the worst track, and then you've got the best of both worlds. So that would sort of be my advice. Uh, next question is from uh, Kyle Wells. Uh, Hi Dave, are you excited about Apple's alleged event in March? If so, what are your hopes on what they'll announce? I'll be super excited if they do a March event. 
The rumours are they're going to announce new iPad Pros, but possibly with a later launch date, which seems to be a trend with Apple lately. They seem to pre-announce products. They never used to do that. They used to announce it and it would be available the same week. Um, but they've got into this habit of pre-announcing things. So that's the likeliness. Uh, and if they launch the new mid-size iPad Pro, that would be the one I'll be getting. I'm not sure what else they're going to be doing, but I do hope that it shows some love towards the Pro users. I've talked about this in previous videos. The Mac Pro needs a proper update. It's been so many years that it hasn't been updated. That I really do hope that we get some new Mac Pros announced, or new specifications at least. I don't expect them to do a whole new design. The Trash Can Mac Pro is a good design. I just expect a spec bump, a really good spec bump as well. I also noticed a question from Rui Abru. Nintendo Switch, are you getting one into review or personal purchase? I'm not going to this time. I had intended to, and in fact, I had a Nintendo Switch on pre-order. But I didn't know what game to pre-order alongside it. And it got to the point of me thinking... Do I really want this pre-order when I'm not really going to use the device? I'm so undecided about what title or what game I'm going to purchase alongside. And until they get a good catalogue of games out, I don't think I'm going to invest in one. So I won't be covering one on the channel, not straight away anyway. Maybe in the future. Uh, Siren Sister asks, how's day two of being an X100F owner? That is a great question. If you watch my previous video and, and previous live broadcast, I unboxed the new Fujifilm X100F. Great camera, and day two has been terrific. I've managed to get out and about with it. I've probably taken about 80 photos, roughly. It is so nice, ergonomically nice, nice and light, nice and compact. The lens really resolves a nice amount of detail. They've done a great job on the new higher megapixel count sensor as well. It's just a great, great camera. If you haven't seen that video, look back a couple of days on the channel and you'll see my Fujifilm X100F live unboxing. Great, great camera. Uh, Taze asks, have you heard about the new Sony Xperia with 1000 frames per second 1080 camera? Yes, I have. And if that's true, that's going to be absolutely fantastic. I really do look forward to that. And a very uh, sort of relevant question as well is coming from Ryan. Is the Sony mobile division coming to an end in your view? Now, I don't think it is. I think they're just refinding their feet and on where their niche is in the product market. And I think they're concentrating on building great quality cameras into their smartphones and not necessarily the other specs. They're really focusing on that camera, pardon the pun. Um, this is a good example. This is the Sony Xperia XA Ultra. Great cameras on it, really good cameras. And I think that's where Sony excel. So no, I don't think that they will be uh, closing that down. Uh, Stiffy, to Stiffy Toffee Pudding, what a great username, love it. Love the vids, thank you very much. I can see you love cameras. Do you have an idea of what your net spend on camera gear is? No idea at all, because cameras come and go in the studio. There's very few that I actually keep for production gear. Uh, most of them are review products. So my current two cameras are the Panasonic G80, which I use for recording most of my videos on the Geek Noise channel, and also the new Fujifilm X100F. So they're my main two cameras. So net spend, I've got no idea, because they get rotated. So that's, that's the way things happen here. Uh, Siren Sister says, they seem to be on pre-order pre everywhere, even with Clifton cameras. I got my X100F from Clifton cameras, so I assume they're just waiting for stock to be replenished. Uh, Nazmol Hassan asks, Canon 70D versus Canon 80D, which one's best? Between the two, there's hardly anything in it. If I had to choose and I was making the wise purchase, I would go for the 70D. If I was making the no holds bars purchase, money no issue, then just get the latest Canon 80D. But there's hardly anything between the two. So anyway, I'm just gonna grab a quick drink and give everyone a chance to post some more questions. I'm also gonna show this before I take any more questions as well, which is a really great product that Manfrotto sent me in. So let's move on 
to this product and this is a really great product i was going to actually uh save this a little bit longer but we're already 20 minutes into the live broadcast i want to say a big big thank you to manfrotto they've shown me so much support on the channel over the past few years uh, their tripods are amazing and this is uh, it's called a shoulder pod that's sort of the the branding that it's got at the top and this is the mobile pro rig and this particular version is the x1 that's the important thing now depending upon which one you choose if i just turn this round, you can see all the different models so they're all in the same range and as you go up the range you just get more features and by more features i mean sort of more mounting possibilities and this is the ideal rig for if you want to use your smartphone for actually doing videos and i mean like regular videos vlog videos really good production and i'll show you why so i've got one just set up down here so this is the x1 and this is what it looks like and it is absolutely fantastic look at this awesome awesome product now it doesn't come with all these accessories you just get the rig and what it gives you is two handles either side which i'm currently holding on to so you hold on to this gives you a nice stable way of holding your uh, smartphone it's not stabilized as such but it allows you to hold it nice and firm you can tuck your sort of uh, elbows in and get a really nice grip on it or you can hold it out a bit and let your sort of arms stabilize the fact that stabilize it the fact that you've got two handles really does help there's also a wrist strap you don't have to put this on but i wanted to show you it actually on here and it just screws on here or it goes on before you actually uh, put the threaded sort of mount into this bottom bit here so it has got a nice wrist strap and then it comes with these mounts so there's like a cold shoe mount here which i've currently got a rode video micro on and then it also comes with this center mount here which i've currently got a video light on i'm not sure i've got any batteries in there so there's no batteries in here at the moment but this allows you to mount a video light manfrotto do some great video lights which are nice and compact which would fit in this middle section and then it also comes with this uh, smartphone mount and it's got like a little turning bit on the top of the smartphone mount and this allows you to open up the sort of aperture that you're going to put the smartphone into and this is big enough to hold something like this this is slightly this is the sony xperia xa ultra it's a six inch smartphone this is slightly bigger than the iphone 7 plus so anything smaller than this will fit in absolutely fine including the iphone 7 plus and then you can record video on your camera here or indeed the other way around if you want to do it front facing and you've got really good quality audio this would need to plug in to the smartphone as well so that you get good quality audio from the video micro and you've got a really awesome mobile rig and it's so well made this is like wooden handles as well and then there's a wooden plinth on the top here so, you, so you've got like a wooden plinth here You've also got slots in it so you can move things up and down so you can position things into different different sort of holes there also i don't want my smartphones fall out there are threads on the bottom of these as well so you can put even more accessories on it's just absolutely fantastic i can't believe how well made this is especially this clamp area this is a really good clamp nice and strong it's got rubber sort of uh, sections in here as well so it's not going to damage the smartphone this uh, particular smartphone is a little bit smaller but even with a case on so even my iphone 7 plus with a case on will actually fit inside this mount it is just really nice nice and tactile really high quality piece of equipment now again just to show you the packaging so this is the x1 uh the pro rig this is called very very good indeed and again when this broadcast is finished i'll leave a link down in the uh, video description area to where you can pick up one of these for yourself but i just think it's great if you're into creating video and you want to do it on your smartphone this will take things to the next level great great product so anyway i'm going to go back to taking some more questions so if you've got any questions at all relating to this to the shoulder pod or indeed any tech related questions please do leave them in the comments section so we've got a question from taze are they stabilized 
I think that's referring to this. I, I think I answered this as well. It's not electronically stabilized or no counterbalances. It's purely the fact that you've got two handles uh, and you, it's just a much more stable platform for you to be able to get some sort of smooth pans. Uh, any thoughts on the DJI Osmo? I had a DJI Osmo in the studio. Great product, but when I had it in, there were a lot of bugs and it really annoyed me and frustrated me. The overall quality of the product, fantastic, and I think they've done a lot more firmer updates since I had it into the studio, so it should be a lot more stable now. Now, before I answer any more questions, I'm gonna ask you all a favor. If you can tweet out a link to this broadcast, I would really appreciate it. If you can share a link to the video you're watching, that really does help get more viewers in. And also, don't forget we have got that super chat feature there, so if you do want to support the channel, or indeed have your comment or question highlighted, then you can use that super chat function. But I love all of your comments, so let's go on and answer some more questions. Uh, Siren Sester says, rumor has it Nikon will be announcing something big for this anniversary year. What are your thoughts? I think they're going to announce a new flagship DX camera and a new flagship FX camera very, very soon especially within the next month, I would think. And I'm hoping that that means that they will survive as a company and start thriving again. They've had some hard times lately, so I wish them all the best, but I do think we're gonna see two new flagship cameras come out very, very soon. Uh, Life Tips UK, hello Dave. Is 1.43 megabits per second a good upload speed? Or if, if not, what should, be, what should it be as an average? Wow, that's a hard question because it depends upon your internet service provider. It depends upon what package you're on as well. I get an average of about 12 to 18 megabytes per second upload speed. Um, and that's on a 200 megabytes per second download speed. I'm with Virgin Media. So it really does depend on your service provider and what package you're on as well. Because I can choose different upload speeds and you pay accordingly. So there's, there's a lot of different factors and also peak times as well and some internet service providers do throttle your connection as well. Uh, we have also got uh, a question from uh, Oivind Solly. Matt's included in the box. I'm not sure what you're referring to. If you want to try rephrasing your question, I'll try and answer it a little bit later on. Uh, also, a question here from uh, from Dazzy Army. Have you bought the new Geekanoids 3.2 phone case upgrader? Not sure what you're referring to there either. You're going to have to help me out on that one. That's a, a question I can't answer. So anyway, there's no more questions at the moment. So, oh, we've got a comment here, interesting comment, which is some feedback for Life Tips UK. Taze is getting 47 megabits per second upload and 166 megabits per second with EE, which is pretty respectable. Uh, Ryan Barkley is asking, do I miss the headphone jack on my iPhone? No, not really, I don't. I've got the little adapter, I've got a couple of spare adapters as well that I've put onto three and a half millimeter audio jacks with headphones attached. No problem, no problem at all. And even the microphone, I'm using a little SmartLav microphone. This is the Rode SmartLav Plus. It's connected with a three and a half millimeter cable. In fact, I can probably show you it if I'm not sitting on it. So this is connected with a three and a half millimeter audio cable into an extension lead and then that extension lead goes into the lightning uh, connector adapter. Problem sorted, so I don't miss it at all. Uh, Taze, any suggestions for a flash drive for the iPhone? SanDisk make a great one. Uh, and also, uh, Hu2, H-O-O-T-O-O, really good value lightning flash drive for the iPhone. I've done a video on it on the channel, so if you search Who To and Geekanoids, then it will come up, and they are really very, very good indeed. iStick is great as well. Good suggestion, Ryan. The iStick is fantastic. Uh, Dan, MUFC 1999. Uh, my video camera that I have 
what cheapest add-on mic for the Panasonic SDR50 would you say is the best for my sister's wedding in a couple of weeks? Assuming that your camera has got a three and a half millimeters audio jack, I would suggest the Rode VideoMic Pro. It's got a gain switch on it, allows you to switch down the audio levels in your camera if it's got that feature, and allows you to get a cleaner quality audio. Uh, Charles Mackenzie Hill. Hello Dave, just clicked in, I haven't got a question, but wanted to say hello. Hellos are always welcome in the streams. I really do appreciate that. So there's no more questions at the moment. So I'm just gonna recap for those of you who are just tuning in on what I've showed you so far. I've shown you the HyperX Alloy FPS keyboard. This is my new second favorite keyboard. The Kanex Multisync keyboard is still my favorite, but this is a very, very close second. It is a superb keyboard and I can type ultra fast on it. That's what I showed right at the beginning of the stream. And then we've also got this shoulder pod. For those of you who are just tuned in, this is an awesome product. Manfrotto UK sent me this, and it allows you to mount your smartphone, a light in the middle, and a microphone on the end, and capture really awesome quality video. Fantastic, it really is a great product. So there's the two products I've shown you so far. So if there aren't any more questions, I think we're going to sort of end the stream. We've been going for about 30 minutes again, which seems to be the optimum time for everybody to actually tune in. Oh, Dan MUFC has just jumped in with a quick question. We will answer Dan's question. When is the next Apple event, Dave, if you know? I have heard that it's gonna be around about March the 20th. Now, I don't know what day that falls on. I don't even think that is a very accurate, let me just have a look. It could be, that is a Monday. Now typically, Apple would do their events on a, a Tuesday normally. So March the 20th or 21st, I'm gonna go for March the 21st. That's not in concrete, you know, that's not a definite date, but I've heard it's round about that day. And if that is true, and we don't get delays on the product announcements, then they might be available the following Friday. But some of the rumors are saying we're gonna to have to wait till maybe May for the new iPad, the new iPad Pro that is. So we will have to wait and see, but I do think we will see an, uh, some sort of product announcement or keynote speech in March. Uh, Dave, when will the Windows 10 Creators update be available for the public? I've got no idea on that front. I'm still getting used to Windows 10 Pro. I know the update is coming soon and I'm really looking forward to it. Maybe that will sort out some of the issues. Probably not, because the main issues are with Adobe Premiere Pro, uh, but hopefully that will sort out some more issues, and it's got some really nice features that they're working on as well. I think Microsoft are doing a fantastic job lately of the Windows operating system. Uh, during my setup procedure of the Alienware Aurora R6, I had no issues really with Windows at all. All of the issues have come from Adobe Premiere Pro, so big thumbs up to Microsoft for really making the platform a lot more mature feeling and a lot more stable. Aviation Videos has said hello. Hello to you too. And I feel really mean now because I'm gonna actually end the broadcast and you've just tuned in. But I've been on here for what, 32 minutes. People say that that's plenty long enough for the live streams. And also my voice gives out. I say this in pretty much every live stream. It's unbelievable. I think it's because I try and project my voice so much and forget I'm wearing the little uh, sort of uh, lapel microphone here. But anyway, I hope you'll have a fantastic weekend wherever you are. Uh, next week, a little bit of a different schedule for my regular videos on the Geek and Noise channel. Um, I'm actually having my wisdom teeth removed next week. So I'm gonna be out of action just for probably 24, 48 hours, but I'll try and do another live broadcast midweek. So anyway, that's it for this particular live stream. Thanks again for all of your questions. I really do appreciate it. Have a fantastic weekend wherever you are as well. And if you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe because I publish a new tech video pretty much every single day. Thanks very much for watching everyone. Have a great weekend.